Welcome to the stream today. I'm going to be playing um, Alice's Adventures. No, not Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It's just called Alice in Wonderland. Although the game is called Walt Disney's Alice in Wonderland because they like to put Disney branding in the names of a lot of their games, but not all of them. It's confusing. Anyway, is that sound coming through? Yes. Okay. Just going to check that. Yep, that looks pretty good. Cool. Hi, Gibbon. How's it going? Now I do have the world's biggest Alice in Wonderland fan in the background, um, so you might hear her voice from time to time. She's here to look after the cat and uh, mind mind her. <laughs> that was not a cat, that was a human. I'm a cat. You're not a cat. Nobody's gonna believe you. Come on. Sorry, I'm trying to get the stream up on my secondary device, which always takes a little while to pop up. There it is. Okay. I will need to check that later because, yeah, um, once I'm done with this, this is the Game Boy Color game based on the animated film. Um, later on, I might be playing a DS game, so there'll be some... Um, complicated layout stuff with that. But anyway, let's get started with this. Uh, oh, what's this? An art gallery. That's pretty cool. Um, where in Wonderland? <laughs> I don't know what this is, but it's got a two-player mode. I have no link cable for this uh, emulator. You never know where I'm going to hide. Stand next to a place to look inside. What is this? This is totally not what I was expecting. <laughs> There's a hide-and-seek game, apparently, within this game. With a multiplayer mode, so that's pretty cool. Cold. Ah, Tony's here. Hi, Tony. Good to see you. He says he had Beauty and the Beast for Game Boy Color. That's cool. This was kind of a... an era when... Um, Disney was making spin-off games for a lot of their new movies, but also some of their old movies. Of course, this one was 1951 originally. Uh, mm, well, this isn't. Uh, this isn't really the main attraction. So, um, yep. Okay. Uh, how about? Yes. Okay. Oh, I hit the reset command. Yeah, the animation is pretty good, Tony, isn't it? Um, Oh, it's Gibbon's, Gibbon's brother's birthday, and he's going to be having a party for him later, so he might not be too active in chat, but that's cool. Yeah, enjoy it. And um, he's also playing Monster Boy, which is a new game that's just come out um, in the uh, Wonder Boy in Monster World series, Super Series. Okay, so there's an art gallery that we're going to unlock things for, but anyway, let's start the real game. Uh, my name is Abba, of course. Once upon a time, a young girl named Abba sat up in a tree daydreaming when she should have been paying attention to a history lesson. Was it history or maths? Or singing? In the TV movie, like, she's trying to get away from her singing lessons, right? Yeah. She has to perform. Uh, agreed to meet with him and offer him the crown. Alice, will you kindly pay more attention to your history lesson? What? Oh, I'm listening. I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. Oh, a rabbit with a pocket watch. How curious. So, this is the main game. It's a side scroller. And. Yeah, we're starting in the British countryside or whatever. Before we get to Wonderland. Ah, oh, interesting. Trick of perspective. You see, because you're on a 2D plane, they simulate rocks being in different, uh, like, Z-axis spatial locations by shifting them on the Y-axis. It's a little trick. Donkey Kong Country does the same thing, actually. Mr. Rabbit, wait, please. Oh. Um, a 
Okay, so Cheshire Cat pops up to tutorialize me. Float right, left, fast or slow, but beware of what floats from below. Tony's admiring the pixel art. Yeah, I gotta agree. It's quite detailed. Um, so you would have seen the logo a couple of times at the start. Um, this game was made by Digital Eclipse, who you'd probably know them these days for... Whoops, yep, so I could speed up and I missed a star. I can also slow down. Yeah, okay. So I don't want to hit stuff. Yeah, so you might know Digital Eclipse from the recent, uh, like, port collections they did. So they've done Mega Man Legacy Collection, only the first one. Capcom handled on themselves after that and didn't do quite as good a job. Um, they did the Disney Afternoon Collection, of course, as a connection to this. Um, and most recently, the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection. So with uh, Frank Cifaldi on the team, I'm not 100% sure on how to pronounce his name, but he's a well-known uh, video game preservationist and historian, and accuracy, above all else, is um, very important to their port work. That's what they're known for. Wow, it's so fluid. I think they did a really good job here. I wonder where the rabbit went. Perhaps if I find the end of these strange hallways, I will find him. Collecting stars is a blast to do, and even serves to help you. Cool. So, I know Digital Eclipse thanks to... Oh, okay. Are you small or are you tall? Mushrooms are the keys to the halls. Thanks, cat. Kitty. Meow. Um, yeah, I know Digital Clips from... What do I know them from? I, I made a note of it. Oh yes, um, I think maybe the only game that I, of theirs that I've played uh, is Rayman Hoodlum's Revenge, which is an isometric uh, kind of action platformer on the Game Boy Advance in the Rayman series. It's a sequel to uh, Rayman 3 Hoodlum Havoc. It, it's, it just kind of reuses all the um, trappings of that game. And in terms of the characters and stuff. To jump very far, the secret is to press the B button to run, then jump. Thank you. Whoops. Okay. So you get hat labels to restore health because that's how it's marked on your HUD there. Mm -hmm. Teacups are falling, interesting. Right, so I would have been able to get those stars if I hadn't gotten the small mushroom, the disembigening mushroom. Who is that? I must know. Oh, it's a running clock. Ouch. Okay, that was kind of a dead end. <laughs> um, Tony's saying, speaking of Rayman, he played Raving Rabbit's TV party on DS and it was DS and it was shocking how lazy it was. The music was royalty-free music from Microsoft PowerPoint. <laughs> That's horrific. Can't you see that I'm locked? You need a key to get through me. Goodness, I must find the key. Curses. Go back. Oh, that's clever. That sprite rotation. Oh boy, okay. Well, let's try and not be small when we do this because we might need the extra height. There we go. Oh, I think the music changes depending on my size. Hold on. Yeah, the MIDI instruments have changed. That's really clever. Oops, can I pass through that wall? No. Her sprite just sort of overlaps it. Whoop, okay. Luckily they regrow and you can just redo it. Whoops. Pop. Hmm. Wait, I don't get it. I couldn't come up from below to get that key, could I? No. 
<laughs> yeah, I played the first Raving Rabbids game on DS, and um, like you, you would know that series for being sort of mini game compilations, but actually on Game Boy Advance and DS, um, they were platforming adventure games, but with some mini games thrown in. More so on the DS than on the GBA. They sort of translated some of the existing mini games from the Wii version to the DS version. Um, but it also had a full, like, platformer that was built in the engine of Rayman 2 for DS, so it was 3D graphics. It was actually pretty interesting. Like, not amazing, but um, pretty cool, and a lot of people probably don't know it exists. Though I don't know what's more obscure, like that, or the GBA version, or even the mobile version, which is kind of a competent, almost Sonic the Hedgehog clone kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, Tony says the GBA one was good. It um, aesthetically took a lot from the original Rayman, so there's quite a strong through line, as well as featuring uh, characters that weren't otherwise in the Raving Rabbids project as a whole, like um, uh, La uh, Lee the Fairy and um, uh, Glowbox and things like that. Okay. I don't know what the stars exactly do, but I was told they might help me. Ah. Okay, so being small is actually advantageous to getting under those spears. Whoop. Oh! I didn't realize I was so close to death, but that's quite a nice game over screen there. It's a slight animation, but detailed. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, apparently the GBA Raven Rabbits had a game-breaking bug for one specific enemy in one of the final levels. I didn't know about that. But yeah, Tony's saying that Ubisoft for a while had a lot of terrible uh, DS games. I believe it. Go small, get this key. Stay small to get into these. Um, yeah, so I think that's the Rayman tangent played out. So in addition to this installment in the Rayman series, the only 3D platformer on a handheld until, except for, you know, ports and stuff. Um, they also had games in other big franchises. They did a Sonic game, Sonic Rivals, on the PSP. Um, this is Digital Eclipse. Uh, they were, they did used to be known as Backbone a while back, so um, there's continuity in that company, even if the name changed. So that might cause confusion. Uh, what else did they do? Whoops. Oh yeah, they did Grand Theft Auto Advance. and a version of Frogger for the Xbox 360, although that was sort of halfway between a new game and an arcade preservation thing, which is the other thing that they've always been known for. It was kind of a replication of the original Frogger gameplay, but with new 3D graphics. Um, yeah, so in addition to... Oops, okay. Yeah, in addition to these ports, they were also known for making handheld versions or conversions um, of other games to like the Game Boy and stuff. They did the Game Boy version of Mortal Kombat for instance and other ones. Wasn't sure what that enemy was exactly. Looked like a hamburger. Whoops. Ah, ah. Yes, Tony's mentioning a game that I've seen in several bargain bins before. A stop smoking coach for DS, made by Ubisoft. And he wondered how that would work. I would guess it just leads you through a process. Um, it's probably just a glorified slideshow or something. Be careful of the tricky flaws! And what does that mean? I don't remember what the Cheshire Cat's voice was like in the movie. 
the animated movie anyway. No, we don't want that. We won't, we won't be able to jump high enough on these platforms if we're small. Oh. Oh. I thought that was the way forward, but apparently not. Whoops. I feel like... <laughs> uh, I feel like I should be able to float because Alice's dress reminds me of Princess Peach and... Super Mario USA. Ah, I see. I've just screwed something up. Hold on a second. The wrong window was in frame and I've hit the button. Oh, it didn't screw up the way I feared it might. That's okay. Forgive the interruption. That's why you always have the right window in focus. Whoops. Ah. Did I actually save? Uh, I better not risk it. Has the cat lost interest? Uh, hello? Bedtime for cats. Bedtime is like 22 hours a day. Ah. Oh. Hmm. I'm not going to resort to rewinding just yet. But a long play this game takes a bit over an hour, so... I'm going to try and get through it so I can show off a bit of the DS game, because I'm qu I was quite impressed by the graphics, if nothing else. Oh, no. Okay, rewind time. Cool. <clears throat> well, I don't know, Tony. I mean, the DS was sort of a... Uh, kind of exciting new thing for game developers with the potential um, it represented with the, the touchscreen and stuff, but also the new markets that it was opening up, I think that was also a big factor. People who had never been into games before were buying these things, and um, I guess they were just throwing everything they could at the wall and seeing what stuck. But yeah, the My Stop Smoking Coach probably did not stick too well. Ow. Okay, so that was a flaw that I was supposed to fall through. What is that? A magic handkerchief? Hmm. Yeah, luckily those flaws don't fall through straight away. Give me a bit of time to react. Or, I mean, not react, just completely pass over it. Hmm. Okay, I need a key. Can I get it by going up here? Possibly not, I might have to go the other way around. Unless that's a drop floor. It's not. So how do I get in there? Hmm. What? Well, I guess the answer is shrinking. Going in here. Clever. There are eight magical pots hidden throughout Wonderland. Their purpose is for me to know and you to find out. That did not look like a pot, but okay. I'm gonna guess they unlock pictures in the gallery, maybe. Hmm. Okay. So what's missing? There's a key up there. What if I fall down here? Yeah, okay. That's the answer. As long as you don't fall twice. Uh, yeah, so the other thing... Oh, here we go. You have found all the stars in this area. Thank you. Just for that, I'll restore your health to the maximum level. Wonderful. Would be really nice if you'd increase the maximum level, but I guess that's not in the cards. Yeah, so the music changing when you shrink is kind of charming, and the sprite is adorable when you're tiny. That reminds me of Rayman games on Game Boy Color. 
but also it had a little bit of a level design quirk there. Not bad. Uh, yeah, so the other thing Digital Eclipse was known for that caught my eye was um, some Spyro games. Jump on the clock again and again, that ought to stop him. Ooh, a boss fight. I'm hopping mad, stay out of my way. No one messes with time. Whatever, dude. I mess with who I like. What is that? Um. What the? So I can get power ups by hitting these birds. Okay. One let me jump higher, and one I think did damage to the clock. Like a power block. I'm not sure what these birds are supposed to be. Their body is some kind of um, thing that is not usual for a bird's body. Ah, I guess that it is possible to stop time. Oh, I'll never catch the rabbit. It seems just hopeless. Wah, wah. Careful, young lady. Stop your crying. Oh dear, jump into the bottle. Find dry land and beware of baddies. Did they say that in the film, beware of baddies? Stuck in a bowl? Oh dear, right or left is the way to steer. Rhyming, love it. Ah, okay, so here we have a top down section. Yep, avoid the baddies. Oh, I didn't avoid the baddies well enough. <laughs> oh wow, instant game over, fine. Yeah, so everyone knows the original Spyro trilogy by Insomniac on the PlayStation 1. It just got re-released, in fact, as the Reignited Collection for modern consoles. But, of course, there is a lot of games in the series, as I was explaining to my brother yesterday. Whoa, okay, so if you're going fast and hit a rock, you die, so I won't do that again. Yeah, I mean, there's Shadow Legacy on the DS, there's a bunch on mobile phones, there's two installments on PS2, there was the um, crossover with Crash Bandicoot on the Game Boy Advance, they're both side-scrollers, but um, yeah, the, the original GBA trilogy of Spyro games were all made by Digital Eclipse, and they were isometric platformers, sort of trying to be the same kind of 3D platformer that the original games were. Alice's bottle washed up on the shores of a strange and wonderful land with many places to explore and friends to meet. I don't know if anyone there is really a friend. Wonderland Forest has many strange creatures and they will only help you if you help them. Welcome to Wonderland. So I wasn't already in Wonderland? I guess that strange transition place isn't Wonderland proper. But yeah, now we see the return of this isometric kind of gameplay that the multiplayer mode was. I guess it's not a return, this is the first time you should be seeing it. I suppose. Oh. Okay. Is that a friend? I was just told that they were friends. Oh my, what manner of creature are you? I am a brush dog. I maintain the paths of Wonderland. If you beat the rabbit in a race, I'll take you to a secret place. I shall try to remember that. Good day. Oh, I can jump here too. Oh, something's hurting me. It was either the bug or the bird. I'm guessing the bird. Oh, that sign is totally inscrutable. Mm. Oh, is this the carpenter? Yes. Alice never actually meets him. He just appears in a story that's told by... Um... Tweedledum? Tweedledum? Yeah, good. I've been looking for my hammer for days. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. But if I do, I will bring it right to you. I remember that I brought it to the caterpillar in the woods. Oh, the caterpillar woods. Is that what that is? Is that a caterpillar sign? Oh, okay. We can't actually read it. 
The sign reads, follow this path to the Tweedles. Let's go see the Tweedles. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Tony says he just watched a Let's Play of the smoking game and it's bizarre. Well, that's a little strange. I don't know if you could even have a Let's Play. Yeah, it's a pretty small area, but I got stars. These like musical instrument frogs I see now. It's a pair of cymbals. Yeah, can you even really play it? I wouldn't even call it a game. It's more like an application. These days it would be on a smartphone, you know. Too bad, we're so sad. We've lost our hats, you see. I would be happy to look for them. <clears throat> oh, that's weird. It kicked me back to this hub. Um, okay. That's it. Oh, a chew! I have a terrible cold. You wouldn't have seen my favorite handkerchief, would you? A handkerchief? I will help you look for it. I fear that I forgot it at the tea party. I had no idea that this whole section of the game existed. A sort of free rooming world. I thought it was all just a platformer. Excuse me, but I think this is the path to get home. Why would you think that? You cannot pass unless you have the Queen's four royal medals. Okay, so I have to roam this hub, find four medals, and then I get through to the Queen's Garden. Follow these parts of Rabbit's house. So I've got two leads so far. The Caterpillar Woods and... Um, the Tea Party. Uh, the rabbit goes through a tea party, doesn't he? Ah, uh, that, that looks like the um, Mad Hatter's sign, so that's the tea party. And here's the walrus! Good day, young lady! You haven't seen my cane, have you? Can't say that I have. Where were you last? Mm, I believe I was talking to Mr. Rabbit at his house. I should keep my eyes open for it. Good day. Okay, I see how this is going to go. I see the structure here. So where's the fourth person? Ah, the talking flower. Hello, dear. Have you seen my best conducting wand? No, but I would be happy to look for it. I might have left it carelessly at the Tweedles. And this would be Caterpillar Woods. Okay, let's go there first. So Tony's describing the Stop Smoking Coach game. It's a bit of a slideshow presentation, but then there's say, there's like say as an example, they mention that nicotine is an endless cave you are trapped in, and then suddenly you are playing a mini game where you find diamonds in a cave. Okay, so there are game elements to it. I was unfair to dismiss it, so. But yeah, they are kind of shoehorned in it seems. As Tony says, there are a lot of ill-fitting mini games in it, and it's weird. Yeah, it sounds pretty interesting, actually. Kind of a weird curiosity. I'm probably going to need to shrink at some point, aren't I? That looks like it's going to be a recurring mechanic. It's pretty annoying to make progress and then find that you didn't... that you have to backtrack to um, change your state. Let's come back. Ooh, the hammer. Perfect. I believe this is the carpenter's hammer. Oops. Okay. I'd like to talk to the caterpillar while I'm here. Hello. Oh, hello. Hmm, you will need something. The compass will help you catch my bubble letters. Goodness, I would have to find a compass somewhere. Wow, so this is just a whole bunch of fetch quests in this uh, area of the game. No. No, shut up. Okay. Okay, let's find the carpenter. Hello. Oh boy, you found my trusty hammer. Thanks a lot. I baked some fresh biscuits. I want you to have them for helping me. Those look like scones, I would say. 
Although, don't Americans call scones biscuits? And this game was made by Americans. And there weren't scones in the original movie. Yeah, Digital Eclipse is based in the US. Um, okay, so that the biscuits might be part of a different trading quest or something. Stop, stop, stop. I don't want to talk. Okay. Conducting ones. Where have I not been? Let's just go to another place. Towards the Light Rabbit's house. Actually, scones, I should take them to the tea party. That would make sense, right? Yeah, I'll go there first. Yes, 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 okay. Um, let's see, I've got some notes here. I was gonna mention, I meant to mention last week actually, but I overlooked it. Um, I read a really interesting article on Proto Dude's Rockman Corner, which Okay, halfway getting through getting hit by that spider, I also collected a star, which refilled my health. Uh, all locked in. The house has the key. Some tea for you, some tea for me. What? Oh, I found another hub area, I guess. Let's talk to some of these mad folk. Nope, they're not talking. Hello? Guess I'll follow the arrow then. That's a really big table. This reminds me very much of um, Bubsy Fractured Fairy Tales for the Jaguar, of course. As the first level was based on, or the first world was based on um, Alice in Wonderland. It being a public domain work, of course. All right, the arrow is pointing me to the door mouse, I see, so I'll have to catch it. I actually can't jump in this area. Oh, wonderful, a key for the gate. What gate? Oh no, you must stay for more tea. He took away the key. I shall have to chase down the, the mouse again. What? So the rabbit gate, the march hare gave the key to the mouse, which I then need to chase down. Fair enough. Um, yeah, so it's a public domain. Oh, before I talk about that, I was in the middle of saying something about, um, I was on the Rockman corner reading about um, this new gambling game in Japan. It's it's great. Um, okay, so right. So them grabbing the key is not just something that happens. It's something that you have to avoid and get to the gate before the key is confiscated. <sighs> well, I don't even know where this gate is. I guess I should figure that out. Uh, is that it over there? Possibly? Anyway, um, yeah, so there's a game called Patchy Slot Rockman Ability, which is interesting in one way in that there's this, oh god. <laughs> Get away from me. Um, yeah, it's this whole like reboot of the Rockman series basically with new designs and those aspects of it look pretty interesting. Um, it's just too bad that it's kind of locked in this uh, slot machine, basically. Two more keys, what? Oh my goodness, all right. So chase it down three times without getting caught and return to unlock more gates. Uh. <laughs> we have exactly the same speed, all right. Now let's, oh no. So I have the same speed as the Dormouse, but the Bloody Hatter and the Hare are much faster than me. I just have to... Hmm, okay. He doesn't seem to be moving so fast right now. Go away, you guys. Alright. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Just random movement, completely RNG dependent. Okay. This is the best place for the Dormouse to be. Yeah, so, you know, interesting things about 
Hatchet Slot Rockman ability AI that it introduces new robot masters to the series. It's got a new incarnation of Dr. Light, who is the daughter of the current Dr. Light, um, or Dr. Wright in Japan. Uh, it sort of incorporates some elements of the X series, like ride chases, into um, the mythos of uh, classic Rockman. Aha, the Dodo's handkerchief. Perfect. And we got the third key, so... I guess the reason I was there was to get the handkerchief, right? Oh, another boss fight. Great. Salutations, I tip my hat to you. Oh, it's K. Rule. It's King K. Rule. Okay. I got. I know how this works. <laughs> he throws his hat, and then you bop him on the head. Oh, I can bop him on the head anyway. He's much easier than K. Rule, and no cannibals to be seen either. I do like the crouching sprite, by the way. <laughs> it looks like she's covering her face, too. Boom! Thank you so much for coming to our party! Here's a medal to keep us a party favor! Why, thank you! I must say that this was the strangest tea party ever. Yeah, indeed it was. Indeed it was. It's interesting how the original movie is just such nonsense, basically. Because um, that's what it's going for. But they've had to... Like translate that nonsense into gameplay elements and mechanics. Okay. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I'm late. Uh, yes, I'll begin that again. So I don't know what the point of this is. Uh, nope, it's this way. Uh, this is gonna be tricky. Um, anyway, the reason I bring up this Rockman slot machine is because I did a stream recently about Rockman fan games where the protagonist was uh, one of the lady bots in the series. And, um, okay, he's directing me to the brush dog. And this game has two actually playable female characters. Because there's a version of Roll and there's also a new character who is Roll's sister, Trancy, and they all have their own levels and like weapon unlocks and upgrades and things and stories. I heard you beat the rabbit in a race. Just for that I'll take you to a secret place. Do not leave a secret place until you have searched every space. Cool, so a bonus level, I guess. I assume they're optional, so... I won't focus too much on them. Yeah, so considering I just, in previous streams, had made a list of every Rockman game where you can play as a woman, um, that's one to add to the list, although to actually access it you'll need to go to the extremely seedy pachinko dens of Japan and find one and be prepared to spend, um, I don't know, an inordinate amount of money, I suppose. So yeah, not exactly the most ideal new Rockman game, but it's on the list. Oh, and did I mention one of the new Robot Masters is also a female as well. They're rare, aren't they? Yeah, Ability has um, uh, Coin Woman, who's a ninja, and throws razor-sharp coins. Okay, so I didn't search every space, but it seems like it's just a way to get stars, maybe. Um, I did get one of those magic pots or whatever it is, but yeah, those are like the optional objectives in the game. Okay, uh, where have I not been yet? The White Rabbit's house. Let's go there. Oh, the hanky, of course. Will you be visiting the Tweedle Brothers? I found their hats and have been meaning to return them. Do you mind? I would be happy to return their hats. Well, let's go there. 
So it's all a big running around fetchy fetchy questy thing. You get the right item and you take it to the right place. I wonder if, aha, right. Didn't search here before, but it looks like my scones did get used up at the tea party, so that was the correct, um, the correct way to go. And a, at the end of each one of these areas will be a boss and a medal, which will then let me into the Queen's Garden. So I've got a handle on the structure of the game now. Stupid instrument frogs. I need that health refill now. <laughs> Tony commenting on the Dormouse chase, saying it was horrendous. But, um... There's another game in the Stop Smoking Coach series called My Fun Facts Coach, which I guess is just trivia facts. <laughs> um, okay. Avoid the Tweedles. Oh, okay. They actually hurt you. That's quite rude. I guess they're just doing their little kick dance and I just don't have to stay out of their way. I don't know what the pencil birds deal is either. And glasses with legs. I don't remember half this stuff. Like I said before, the movie is full of like so many non sequiturs and bizarre things that for one thing I can't remember a lot of them, but I also don't remember what order they come in. And I know that the order of the movie is different from the book. Um, and some of the events in it are actually taken from the sequel, Alice Through the Looking Glass. And the same is true of the other movie, which I, I might actually be more familiar with. When I say the other movie, there's probably like a dozen different adaptations of the Alice story. It is in the public domain after all. But the one I'm thinking of is the 1999 uh, TV movie, which we were lucky enough to find a copy of it, I believe in Aldi Special Buys a while back on DVD, um, but it's presented in 4 to 3 because, of course, it was made for TV directly. Um, what's this? The Conducting Wand. Wonderful. So I really do recommend that version. It's really interesting and has a lot of... a strangely high amount of big name actors. Uh, it's got Whoopi Goldberg as the Cheshire Cat, Martin Short is the Mad Hatter, Robbie Coltrane is Tweedledee, um, one health left. And I didn't get all the stars, but if I manage to get out of here, health does seem to refill between certain areas. I wonder if it'll show up on my support screen. No, my health. Oh, it is down there in the corner. Yeah, back to five. Great. Jump, jump, no time to stop. Left to right, to skip and a hop. You came to visit. We're so happy we have to dance. Oh, I see. So, boss fight. Except, they don't think they're fighting me. But I'm going to be fighting them. How strange. Ah, oh, that was a health refill. <laughs> the sprite flicker is so intense that I can barely tell what's going on. Um, cool. Alright, I've killed one of them, and there's the other. Wow, that's mana- now that's manners! Take this medal as your prize for playing! <laughs> what? <laughs> so bizarre. Things just sort of happen in the movie. You know? Alright, what did I just get? Um, uh, the conducting one. Let's go return that. Shouldn't I have got another item? Ugh, like, it's, it's difficult to keep track. Oh, my wand! Now the flowers and I can sing in perfect harmony! Please take this rabbit key as a token of my regard. Okay, so the rabbit key will go to the rabbit's house. That seems pretty self-evident. No, I don't have your cane. Shush. Hmm. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, Gene Wilder was the Mock Turtle. That was pretty good. And of course, uh, Miranda Richardson appears as the Red Queen. The Queen of Hearts. So a lot of big names there. 
She and she's playing very much the same character as she did in Blackadder 2. Um, as Queen Elizabeth the First. Right, so now we're tiny in Rabbit's house. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, fine. I'll get the key. I do like platforming inside a giant house. It's one of my favorite parts of Super BC Kid and also Mr. Nuts. The virus is keen! Hearts as a character. Just, you know, it's it's really um, it just makes me feel terrible for a character to be both like homicidally mad and completely um, in power and commanding everyone, you know. Oh, it's Master Hand. Okay. Oops. No. Um, let's see. Oh, of course, um, Alice in that version with a yellow dress because sometimes these adaptations like to distance themselves from the Disney version, although it just as likely is um, influencing them very much. Uh, yeah, she's played by Tina Majorino. I don't even know if that's how to pronounce it, but I recognized her from Napoleon Dynamite, where she plays Deb, um, the girl with the puffy sleeves. I still love that movie. a bit younger than I am now. Ew. Ah. That was rough. The camera is kind of herky-jerky a bit as well. Ah, a key. I'm gonna need that. So yeah, it is pretty entertaining, uh, this TV movie version. Uh, between the big name actors who are all having a lot of fun, it seems, um, and the special effects, which were quite good for 1999 and for a TV movie. my favorite version I think. Didn't I get a key? I need two keys, okay. Um, this way? No. I guess I have to find another key. Oops. Oh, there's one. Oh uh, yeah, I will talk about how Tim Burton sucks. Um, uh, well, let me tell this one anecdote first. The last time I saw Disney's Alice in Wonderland, the movie, it was in Japan when we went on a trip there, and my background commentator here had found a copy of the film in a 100 yen store.
Although I think it was a bit more than 100 yen. Oh, it was only 100 yen. Interesting. 108 yen, maybe? Plus, plus tax. <laughs> oh yeah, it was most definitely illegal. Not licensed by Disney. I think what we decided was it was a Korean bootleg. Um, judging by the printing on the on the packaging. I really want that star. Cool. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a, the Japanese dub of the film, which I assume was official, although thinking about it now, it might not even have been um, uh, an a Disney endorsed dub of the film. So all the dialogue was in Japanese, but they hadn't overdubbed the songs because, I guess, yeah, I mean, it must have been a bootleg dub because if you had the masters, you would have been able to remove the dialogue track without changing the music track, right? I don't know, whatever. Or, or, the, or maybe the issue was they couldn't be bothered writing new lyrics that matched the music in Japanese, but yeah, all the songs were still in English. Okay, so Alice has eaten the thingy and grown large inside the house. And poor rabbit. Okay. <laughs> Bill, my fellow, kindly climb the chimney and pull out that monster. A lizard with a ladder. A button picks it up, down with the control pad to duck, and up on the control pad to climb. Bill prefers not to jump, so he falls while running to reach each ledge. Each fall often requires a leap of faith. That was really complicated instructions that I did not understand, but I'm now playing as um, the lizard, chimney sweep, Bill. Yeah, it said Bill, I know. But he doesn't look much like a lizard in these graphics. Kind of looks like a string bean. Um, and I need to constantly move my ladder. This is interesting. I didn't expect to be playing as someone other than Alice in this. I don't remember, but I assume he's a Cockney. Irish. Oh, he's Irish, okay. I can't do an Irish accent. Uh, seagull. Seagulls apparently eat lizards. So that was the leap of faith that the cat was talking about, I guess. You gotta climb up and Bill can't jump, so. Yeah. So I just saw a thing up there, and I mistook it for handkerchief early, but it's clearly a teapot, which I see now, and I admit my error. Yeah. See that up on the left? Okay, it's gone now. Oh, oh, how rude. And I'm standing on nothing. Okay, that was really weird. But we want to avoid that seagull, I guess. So let's be quick about this. Excellent. Mm. Oops, I lost the ladder. Oh, that's horrible. Um, oh, great. Okay, rewind. Cool. Thanks to cheating. I managed to make it through. Ah, oh, curses. Wow. The cat's back for more. There was one stream that I did while she was here. I was playing Bubsy actually, and um, the cat came up demanding attention. So much so that I was forced to pick her up and continue playing, which did not work at all. She climbed all over me. There's a brave lad, didn't you go now? I'm counting on you. Chimney dust is everywhere. Achoo. Sorry. Okay, Irish accent time. <clears throat> uh, diddly dee. Oh dear, that was quite a sneeze. No, that was terrible. There goes Bill. Oh my. Oh, she's shrunk. 
Why did she shrink? She sneezed. Oh, and the young lady has vanquished the monster. Right, so that was the boss fight of that area. Was the lizard section. Cool. Well, that was different. <laughs> okay, what's next? We have the key. What? We have. We didn't use the key? Well, I have the cane, so I'm gonna take that over here. My precious cane! What would I do without it? Take this as a gift. It's a compass. Okay, so with the compass, I'll be able to do this caterpillar thing. <sighs> yes. Um, so, I was asked to talk about how bad Tim Burton is. He sucks, apparently. Um, now, I haven't actually seen the Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland movie, which was the live-action 2010 movie. Although I do blame it for a lot of things. Um, of course, being a Tim Burton film, Johnny Depp is uh, the star, basically. Um, so it kind of gives the Mad Hatter a much bigger role than he really should have in the story. Um, you know, in addition to Tim Burton, just uh, sorry, to um, Johnny Depp being a terrible person who is responsible for many awful things like domestic abuse and such. And Pirates in the Caribbean. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and of course, being a Tim Burton film with Johnny Depp, it also has Helena Bonham Carter in it. Um, I don't know if she's responsible for domestic abuse, but... I think she's fine. <laughs> but it's just that, of course, she's there because it's Tim Burton. Ah. Well, so does Martin Short. In the other version. Yeah, she has a giant head, as the uh, Queen of Hearts. Hello? What's wrong with this bubble? It's just popping immediately. Is it because it's too close to... Okay, I think it's too close to whatever that is. Alright, yeah, and if we get away... Perfect. And then we'll come over here... And I can pop the bubbles manually. Hmm, yeah, so I haven't seen it exactly, but... Um, I was present while it was on once. I was um, running a youth group movie night at my old church, and... We were we had these movies playing in the hall um, and I believe that was one of them although I paid zero attention to it I was in the kitchen most of the time who are you? and in the movie he blows uh, smoke rings in those shapes bubble to float let us a key spell your name so you can flee well I'll try well yeah there it is can I just get that? I guess it's been scattered so we're going to bubble. I can speed up and slow down the bubble. But it, also, it of course moves upwards. As is, a, as is a bubble's want. Actually, that's not fair. It depends on the gas within the bubble, of course. Bubbles only are a film that contains um, you know, gas. So whatever you fill them in is what effect is going to happen to them. When you blow bubbles, um, you're just filling them with your breath, which has less oxygen than normal air, but I don't know how much that affects. Um, their buoyancy. Because <sighs> carbon dioxide, if you get dry ice, um, and carbon dioxide comes off that, it will sink, so it's denser than air. So, presumably, your breath is slightly denser than air because it has more carbon dioxide. Um, since that is what you're excreting. Mm, okay, I'm gonna need to shrink to get that L. There's the mushroom. Um, yeah, so have you seen uh, Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland? 
and you didn't like it. <laughs> well, it is a sequel, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be set 10 years later, right? From what I read. She's saying it doesn't have a sense of whimsy, although... Isn't Whimsy Tim Burton's middle name? Has the... Right. It's got the visual whimsy, but not the story whimsy. Yeah, I believe it was going for a, you know, quote-unquote, dark and edgy style. As is Tim Burton's want. Um, but, which is quite at odds with the original movie. Or the book, indeed, yes. Um, isn't one of the plot points that they call it Underland and not Wonderland? I don't know. That's, that's that's one of the facts I know about that movie. Okay, Stephen Fry's The Treasure Cat is a positive. Better than Whoopi Goldberg? Different. Mm. <laughs> the Disney Cheshire Cat is too creepy, she says. Mm. He does kind of pop up from nowhere. He's a bit like Car from the Jungle Book, I think, with the big smile and the hypnotizing eyes. And he just kind of pops up. What's that? I think that's a nasty bee that I need to get away from. Oh, that's a... I think I saw an E over there, but I need the C next, so... Uh, I have to find that. Here it is. Wonderful. Okay, last thing. Um, hang on a sec. Alice is sprite inside the bubble. Was it large or small? Anyway. You play great. Take this medal. Great. That is great. Okay, what am I missing? You've earned a race with me. Oh, I don't want to do the race. Fine. Yes, I assumed the layout was different. Okay. Ah, nuts. Am I getting audio feedback on my choices here? Or is it just making noises? I cannot tell. Rabbits are so fast. Okay. Straight up. Now, this way. Pure trial and error. Wonderful. Um, so, let's see. It also spawned a sequel, actually, which neither of us have seen. Um, and I think that was called Alice Through Looking Glass, maybe. Uh, okay, so I used the compass but didn't disappear. Same with the key, I guess. But I think I've done everything and given items to everyone now. The signs helpfully have tick marks on them to show you that you've done them, but yeah, now I have the four medals, so I can go up here. Cool. And it's only been an hour. So, I guess this is the final phase of the game, the Queen's Hedge Maze. The roses are all white, you see. It is red that they must be. The Queen will be here in no time. Will you help me? Oh dear, then let me help you paint the roses red. Oh, it's a mistake, dude. She's gonna find out. Oh, there's a timer. Golly, what do I do? Um, red, red paints. I don't have any. Okay, there's some white roses. Yikes. Okay. Um, yeah, but okay, so... Although I haven't seen 
the Tim Burton version. I think I will blame it for one of the evils that it is kind of responsible for, and that is the modern live-action Disney movie remake trend um, that is currently happening. Oh, I didn't know that was possible. Okay. Oh! So there's an evil tree that tries to eat me. And I don't know how many actual trees there are. So yeah, after Alice in Wonderland in 2010, there were a whole spate of these um, live-action remakes with Maleficent and Cinderella, and then... Uh, what was after that? Jungle Book? Um, etc, etc. Beauty and the Beast is in there somewhere. I don't really keep track of them. And I haven't seen any of them. I'm gonna guess there's four of these trees in the card suit shapes. Uh -huh. One more, maybe? Oh, right here, great. Surely we're done. Wonderful. Hello, dear! I'm the Queen of Hearts! Do you play croquet? Then let the game begin! Of course, a croquet minigame. I should have seen this coming. Yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> oh, the, sp the yeah, the, the sprites of the animation. Wonderful. Off with her head. Yep, I was beheaded. Wonderful. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Who played Alice in the live action movie? That's right, it was Mia Wasikowska, an Australian actress who's actually from Canberra, in fact, just like me. Woohoo, Canberra! Well, it's where we are, it's not where we're from, I guess. We're all from Wollongong, even the cat. She was born there, and she still lives there. None of us were born in Wollongong. But we lived there longer than her. She's 18 now, and we all lived there for at least 18 years. No? Oh! Well, there you go. My mistake. Oh, now it's moving. Okay. That hardly seems fair. But that does happen in film. Um, yes, so... Just as Alice in Wonderland has had many movie adaptations, among them Disney's 1951 animated one and 2010 live action one, and the 1999 TV movie, it's also had many, many game adaptations, and if Given were here, I'm sure he would speak to American McGee's Alice, which I know he's a big fan of. Um, in fact, I feel like American McGee's Alice did the whole dark version of Alice in Wonderland before the movie, the live-action movie from Disney did it. Um, but yeah, over the years, as long as there have been video games, there have been Alice video games. Um, whether it be text adventures, um, transitioning into graphic adventures as it went on. Um, there's a lot of platformers, many, many of those, including this one. And a lot of them owe a lot of their aesthetic debt to the Disney animated movie, even if they're supposedly based on the public domain book. Although the book did include illustrations, so it all has its lineage back with the book itself. 
Oh, okay. So, no matter what happens, off with her head. But it's only a game of croquet. That one beats the Queen of Hearts. Catch her! Okay, so now I must evade the guards, I suppose. Yep. Cool, cool. Um, one of the more interesting adaptations I saw was a game called Märchen Maze. Uh, I hope I've pronounced that right, because it's the German word for fairy tale with an A on the um, with an umlaut on the A. Um, it's kind of a, an isometric shooter platformer thing um, for arcades. It was made in Japan. It was ported to a few platforms, including the PC Engine. Where am I going exactly? Yeah, the hit detection there, I didn't even jump, but I bopped one of the guards anyway. So I really should be jumping more. Oops. Oh man. I always hated hedge mazes. Stop the royal guards. Can you topple 52 guards? That's quite a few. After her, I say. Um, let's see. Let's bop 52 guards. Hopefully those birds come along and give me some power-ups. Um, yes. Another one that caught my eye was this odd game called Little Girl in Underland which was like a mock pastiche uh, thing. It's essentially another Alice like graphic adventure game, but the concept of it is that it's a f like this, this, the meta story of the game is that it was made in the Soviet Union um, to be a knockoff of something like American McGee's Alice. Um, but with a, a lot of communist um, overtones and sort of, uh, what's the word, propaganda <laughs> baked into it. Um, so that it, it was made relatively recently, not in the Soviet Union, but that's um, the style and the, like, the idea that they were going for. Ah. some pretty good multi bounces here. Oh, really? That was not a hit. That was me hitting you. Oh, some of them are dropping health pickups. I didn't notice that. The sprite flicker was just too intense. Um, but yeah, we're gonna use the rewind function liberally here a little bit. I don't understand how I got hit there exactly. Um, why don't we start again? We'll try it from the start. Um, what else? Like, there's there's adaptations of Alice in Wonderland, of course, lots of them, but also um, games that just take a, a bit of inspiration from them or some visual elements. Uh, like, in Kingdom Hearts games, there's always a world based on the movie, which is mostly just the hedge maze and the playing cards and stuff, um, in terms of theme. Um, would you say, did you play the manhole? Okay. Oh, okay. Because I know Kathy did on her computer. Um, the Manhole was a game that Robin and Rand Miller made before Myst, and it was um, an adventure game, not unlike Myst, but um, more targeted at children. Um, and I feel like it used some imagery reminiscent of Alice in Wonderland, uh, in terms of you follow a white rabbit at the start down a hole, 
but it's a manhole. But it mixes other fairy tales and stuff in there. Because you start out by going down a beanstalk. Anyway, that's an interesting little curio, and the graphics are quite good. Although they're not mist level um, 3D rendered stuff. Exactly. Seriously, I do not understand that. Oh! That wasn't me dying, that was me winning. I wonder if that happened before and I thought I was dying. Anyway, sensing the opportunity to escape, Alice fled to the hedge maze. It is there that she happened upon the gatekeeper of Wonderland. Who's that exactly? Oh, it's the door. <laughs> okay. Once through the door, Alice tumbled through a magical passage. Whee! Oh my, what a wonderful dream. Alice, have you been sleeping all of this time? Oh, was I? Congratulations, thank you for playing double exclamation mark. You've unlocked a new play zone in Where in Wonderland. That's the multiplayer mode. Cool, so credits time. Thank you, Digital Eclipse. That was an enjoyable little game. And part of that interesting trend of um, new games based on old Disney films. I know The Jungle Book got an adaptation on SNES, um, and Pinocchio did as well, actually. That was on Mega Drive as well. Um, yeah. So, do, 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 do. Um, continuing from my previous point of games using Alice imagery, there's a game called Mickey Mousecapade on the NES um, that was released in 1997, um, where you play as Mickey Mouse, but Minnie's following right behind you, and she sort of mimics all your actions. It's a fun little team dynamic, I guess. Um, but there was actually quite a bit changed between the Japanese original version and the North American release. Um, a lot of the bosses were changed. So in the original, they were almost all based on um, Alice in Wonderland characters but a lot of them got changed to be references to other Disney movies in the North American version. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. And of course, I'm sure a lot of other Disney games have references like that. There's a few Mickey Mouse games that are similar, kind of crossover-y type stuff. Um, doesn't look like I've unlocked any more of these backgrounds, but <laughs> there's this whole stamp mode here. It reminds me of Hello Kitty Picross that I've been playing where by completing puzzles you unlock stamp character stamps and then you can make your own little collage. Very cute. I wonder if this was compatible with the Game Boy printer. Let's put the cat in there. Kitty kitty. Nice. Nice Cheshire cat up in the corner. Yeah. Beautiful. Ah yes, start to print. I can print. Error to no Game Boy printer detected. Um, but yeah, here's all the little creatures we've been bopping on throughout the game. Just one page of them, I guess. Yeah, so that's that mode. All these weird little functions on Game Boy games are interesting. Okie dokie. So, We've got more time, so I'm going to switch over now to the other thing I had ready. Now, while I was testing this out, there were some pretty horrendous sound issues, and then I switched to emulator, and then there were other issues, but I think as long as the preview's disabled, it runs pretty well. So if I start that up, hold on a tick, change this thing to this thing. Uh, that one. And this ought to work, hopefully. Ooh, it's running a little bit slow. And I'm not getting any audio. <laughs> oh no, it's there a little bit. Okay. I think that's okay. We'll try playing this for a bit. Um, otherwise, ooh, I didn't have another backup, did I? Maybe I'll check out Mickey Mousecapade. Um, 
Anyway, this game was released to coincide with the Tim Burton film. Although, as you can see from the art style, um, it kind of does its own thing. Um, you can see a little sticker actually on the box art. Not a sticker, but like an... Uh, there's a word for that. Like a little bubble with some words that describes the thing. Anyway, um, it says inspired by the Tim Burton film in the corner. So it's um, not like copying the visual style that the way that the console game was that was released for like PC and Wii, I think. Anyway, um, I really like the look of this. It's really very interesting. So we're going to give it a go and hopefully the performance is not too horrible. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah, the computer's running out a bit slowly, actually, but... Oh, the frame drops are terrible. And I can barely hear anything. It's coming through on the OBS mixer strong. I think I've just got my own headphones turned down too low because of the um, disparity between the Game Boy Color and the DS. Oh yeah, my mouse cursor is going to show up. I didn't realize that. That's bad. Um, I, I do actually need to use it because this is a touchscreen controlled game. Um, being for the DS, you use the bottom screen to move the characters around by touching it. Yeah, this this is kind of rough. <laughs> I'll at least do a bit of gameplay. I don't think anyone's watching, but um, let me know if this is uh, what's it called like bad. <sighs> Here they are. About time to. Hey, rabbit! Did you find the girl? Is that Alice? Oh, the rabbit's name is McTwisp. Is that an aspect of the live-action movie? I have no idea. After what I went through up there, she better be. Bring her over here, then. Quick, quick. <laughs> yes, use your stylus. I am totally using a stylus right now. Oh, if you touch near him, he walks slower. <laughs> Well done, have a carrot. Wait, he left the girl behind. <laughs> nice angry face. She hates being left alone. <laughs> it's true, she's getting sad. Don't let her start crying, big ears. If the red knight's here, a dreaded vortex will appear. Then you'll be in trouble. Red knights? Is that a thing? Oh. Evil rabbit, you left her alone too long and she's being swallowed up. Go save her then before she's completely gone. Ooh, screams. Okay, plenty of time. Hmm. Actually, the rabbit might be the main character here. That was a fake vortex. Oh, they fooled me. Underland is a dangerous place. See, that's what I was talking about. They call it Underland now. I really like the style of this game, though. It was made by um, Etrange Libellule, uh, which is a French company. That name means um, strange dragonflies, by the way. Um, they're known for doing some Asterix games, including uh, Asterix Noble XXL2 Mission Las Vegas which has recently been re-released on uh, modern platforms. Um, but I also know them for doing the third Legend of Spyro game, so after the original series they rebooted the whole thing. Um, tap on Alice. Walk away from her. Oh, okay. So... Yeah. We can change between telling her to stay or getting her to follow. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> and then she'll follow you. Yeah, cool. So it's a little team dynamic, which I like. 
Although, I guess it kind of makes it a glorified um, escort quest. Also, I like again, I thought I'd be playing as Alice, but apparently I'm playing as the rabbit. Fighting. Um, like this. Oh wow, okay. So we have attacks. Yeah, the, the frame rate is just awful. It shouldn't look like this, but I'm overtaxing my computer apparently, so. Oh, I could quit this application. Let's see if that helps. <laughs> Oh, uh, nope, sorry. Uh, hang on. Hold on. Uh, yeah, that didn't much help, did it? I can close this. Whoopsie. I know the Chrome tabs take up a heck of a lot of RAM. That's really the best I can do. Anyway, um, yeah, like, so Chrome Studio made the first two Legend of Spyro games for consoles, and they had versions on DS and GBA. But for the third one, they booted Chrome, who's an Australian developer, and brought in Atron Shlube Lul to do both the console and the DS um, versions. Oh, I climbed up. Cool stuff. Wait, what? Tap and hold at the top of the obstacle. This obstacle? I don't get it, whatever. Maybe they're talking about the hat. Okay, they were. Oh, I see. So Alice can't get all the way up on her own because the rabbit can jump higher. Oops. So I can pull her up. Yeah, cool. A bit like Eco, actually. Where you sometimes have to help Yorta to get up certain ledges. Yeah, she calls to me. Yeah, this is a lot like Eco, actually. <laughs> well, Eco. It should be pronounced Eco, I guess, in the original Japanese, but it's really up to you. And yes, that's... Uh, I didn't expect to be making that comparison today, but... Um, that really is what is, this is most like to me. Yes, hello? Oh, I can't stand this. Well, I hope I've demonstrated something of the, you know, the, the visual look of the game, which I enjoy. Um, but I really don't know how long I should keep doing this because it just looks terrible. Plus the fact that my mouse cursor is on the screen all the time, that's pretty dumb. I should have thought of that. I'm seeing a mini map with some playing cards and stuff, but we haven't met the Mad Hatter yet. Talking mouse. Oh, the dodo. Hmm. Here's all that lore. Alright, let's go to the diamond door, I guess. And maybe I'll load up some Mickey Mouse Capade. Oh! We can swap the screens and then tap the eye. Okay. <laughs> yeah, quest diary. Love it.
Oh, I noticed the sound is also really crackly and stuff. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, I'm going to stop. In just a minute. Let's just see what's through this door, shall we? Oh no, the mailbox. <laughs> I finished the adventure already? Yes, please. Yeah, I tried to play this game in Open Emu, but um, there was a weird bug. The sound would suddenly get stuck, and then the game would stop accepting inputs. Okay, I'm in block mode. Yeah, this is taking too long. Um, since we have half an hour left, I'm going to stop this and do everyone a big favor not do any more of that. So... Um... Just... yeah. I have to get some Mickey Mouse Capade going. So bear with me for a second. Being it's another Disney game, it's probably the best thing to make that connection with. Come on. Okay, I have Mickey Mouse Capade. Let's start that up. The Japanese version, of course, because that's more like um, it's it's got more to do with Alice in Wonderland. So to do so, I need to do this. Should be able to hear the music and. and away we go. Hang on, press that. Uh, I guess that'll do. All right, let's get started. So in Japan, it is just called Mickey Mouse, made by Hudson, as you can see. And a little house. We're gonna have a return to platforming inside a house, that thing I like. And yeah, you can see them acting as a team. Although technically I suppose you're controlling Mickey and Minnie is just following closely behind. Um, so far, it doesn't have a whole lot to do with Alice. Oopsie. Okay, I found an egg and now I can throw eggs. And I hope they're infinite because I'm going to be using a lot of them. We have an animated television set. Ah. Okay, so there is a health bar. It's kind of in the middle of the screen, sort of. It's um, just there in the middle upper section. But when you've got <laughs> platforms that take you up there, it kind of gets in the way. Now what's this? There's something behind these shutters, but I cannot reach it. Yeah, so I'll at least try and get to the first boss here. Maybe that'll do it. Oh, the Hudson Bee! Ha! <laughs> Cute. You see that show up in a lot of different Hudson games, including Super Mario Bros. Special. Um, which they made for various home computer platforms. 
Okay, that was a health pickup there, but I didn't see what it was. Some nice little noises there from the enemies. Ow. Okay, the gem gives me health. Okay, this seems like a boss. A mini boss, maybe. But I got through without dying. Oh, animated brooms. So, Fantasia pastiche, I see. Um, don't put me back at the start game. Oh good, it didn't. It actually put me at the bottom of the screen that I was just on, so I managed to bypass those brooms. What? They're just invincible, I guess. Oh, Minnie moved down there while I was pressing down. So she's not just mimicking me, I'm actually controlling both at once in a way. That's quite interesting. Ah, so not all the chandeliers are going to fall down? What a trap. Hmm. Hold on. Okay. Let's figure out how to deal with this brain. Ah! Ah! Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll just jump over it, that's fine. Ah, here we go. So there's the boss. It's the Cheshire Cat. The scary animated version, of course. Ah! Nuts. It's quite difficult. Got some rad little boss fight music going on too. I like that. Okay. Jumping powers of jumping. Looks like Mickey's the only one that takes damage. The shots were just passing through Minnie, it seemed. But now we have a key. Is this music supposed to be... Oh, now I hit the broom. What was I doing differently? Um, I was going to say, I noticed a kind of riff in this song that's a little bit like the Mickey Mouse Club theme. This is going to drop. Ugh. Oh, I tried to avoid it, but... No dice. That bit. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the B won't do me any good when there's no one on screen. Now, have I been this way, or do I need to go this way? No, because I came down to those rooms. Yeah, that's right, so I'll go this way. I didn't realize I was dealing with maze elements as well. Ah. Hello? Oh, I guess you can only damage the spiders after they've come down to attack you. Oh yeah, double egg. Nice. Now Mini can attack as well. Yeah, you have to hit the broom handle, not the... Whatever the other part of a broom is called. The brush? The sweepy bit? The old broom brom. The bristles, yeah, that's it. Ah. No, oh, we've become separated. Ah. Yes, the key is to stick together, especially when we both have eggs. It's gonna help a lot. Ah. I really love any game where you have a an integrated partner dynamic like this. Even if it's not co-op. Um, now I've been here. I just don't know. The eggs are bursting on this window, so... Ha! One-up secret. I'm very cunning. Now 
And what is that key good for? I don't feel I've completed the first level until I get to move on to a different area. So... Even though I beat what I thought was the boss. Ah, oh, right, the key. It was right in the first room. I forgot all about it. Keys indoors. It's a common game mechanic. Da -da 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 -da. The ocean. Mini. Um. So. The second level is the pirate ship? No, I don't know. There's a pirate ship at some point in this game. And whatever boss it was, they changed it for Professor Dr. Hook. You know Dr. Hook? Captain Hook. Um, from off the Peter Pan. Yeah, Dr. Hook, the, um, the, the 80s band that my dad likes. <laughs> I said I would just do the first level. Maybe I'll do this one too. Ah, I don't know. Let's do it. Even though it's much more difficult because enemies just come from everywhere. And birds drop poo on you as an attack. You gotta love that in a game. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm done. I'm gonna stop now. Thanks for joining me. This was on the Alice in Wonderland Super Mega Awesome stream. We played all the Game Boy Color game and that was fun. Um, the DS game didn't work so well. And we saw a little bit of Mickey Mouse Capade, which has elements of Alice in Wonderland in it. So, that's the Disney Alice verse for you. Um, hope you had a good time and yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye bye. Wow.